going to show you how to make a buttonhole. To start, you're going to need some tools, a scissors, some stem tape, some pins, we like pearl pins here for the vintage and rustic look, selection of wires, some twine or some string will do, and a sprayer set at a really fine mist. The selection of flowers that I've chosen today for the buttonhole because we're going rustic is some eucalyptus and some asparagus fern for your foliage, some hypericum berries, some red paints, you can also use the spray carnations, some wheat and some blue thistle. So on preparing for buttonholes, I tend to take the flowers and kind of organise the foliage first. And what you need to do is just select through what you need. So with the asparagus fern, I tend to just trim off some of the nicer leaves. You won't need very many for a buttonhole, but just select a few. And then top tip with eucalyptus, don't just pull off, because if you pull off, it'll tend to break and snap. So what we tend to do here is snap the top so it's clear. Snap on the bottom and then put your thumbnail just to the top and peel. Or you can go back in then and just peel off the woody part. And again, same this side. With your thistle, what I tend to do is peel back any of the leaves because the leaves will go brown and dry and cut from about an inch. You probably won't need to go any shorter than that. Just have a selection of thistles ready. The more selection you've got, the better the buttonholes I tend to find. With your wheat, because this wheat is dried, I tend to just peel it back, it's quite sturdy, and just trim it quite short. A little bit longer, because when we wire these, we're just gonna support them. Your red pinks, if you just cut, again, an inch for the flower, and I kind of like using some of the berries, so just a berry off. If you've got any little bits, you can just peel those off. And just trim. And then with hypericum berries, you don't really want large clumps of it. So I tend to take the lower ones off so that you've just got sprigs. Okay, right. Just organize your wiring because we're now ready to tape the wires. So you'll need some poly tape, which is the stem tape. Just, I normally pull myself a selection off because it's easier to work with and then a selection of wires and the key with the wires is they must support the flower head. So if I start with the pinks, I like to use, because they're so little and delicate, I just like to insert it at the bottom through and I tend to do a cross on these because it's extra support and I'll show you what I mean in a moment. Bring the two sides down then one, and the longer side of the last one, you bring down, okay? And then you're gonna wrap this around the wires in the stem. So it's completely supported. And what I mean is, you can hold it like that, and the flower is completely supported by the stem. If it bends, the wires aren't strong enough. So you need to get a stronger wire, a thicker wire. Then we're gonna tape this up to cover the wires and also it actually helps to st 
steel, uh, seal the stem. So you just cover off the wires at the bottom and just follow down the stem. Till it's completely sealed. As I said earlier, on the wheat, it's more of a support. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take another wire. I tend to loop it just down like so. And then you press it at the back. Now, wheat has a natural lean. So I tend to put the lean coming forward to you. Support it at the back. And take another wire and just wrap that around and then carry it down the stem. Now you can cut this stem off. I like to keep my stems quite short in my bent holes, but it's up to you if you want the stem showing, you can keep it longer. Again, we're gonna just take to cover the wire, but not all the way up. We're just gonna take to the base of the wheat And again all the way down so the wires are sealed you seal the wires so they don't stick out they don't cut anybody and they don't catch on any clothing with the hypericum I tend to again it is another support and you put it through bend down and you use this wire all the way around if you've got a heavier one Again, use a second wire, bring it round like you did the crisscross earlier with the pink and you should have enough support there. Any of these tools, um, any wires, any tape you should be able to buy from your local florist or you can get on the internet. Okay, now these are quite small thistles. Some florists tend to support up through the thistle by inserting it into its stem and you just push it through until you feel it toughen and you kind of force it slightly and it'll kind of pop in and then it's supported enough. But you will also need to do a crisscross on this as well. So you go in one way and you go in the second way. Again, pull down, front to back, and then the longer side you keep to wind around. Tape to cover and seal. Again, you probably don't need it this long, so you can go halfway down and snip off any excess. Okay, now we come to the foliage. I'll just move these out of the way. And asparagus fern, a little bit like the wheat, it's not really sturdy enough to kind of push through and wire down. So what you tend to do is the bottom two leaves on this, but it's up to you how far or how long you go. You can remove it or you can push it up and include it, but I'll show you how I like to do it. I like to again do the bend so and push it through so it's facing you like that. Push the leaves up on the base if you can see and then take the longer one again and gently support the stem against the wire. Take your tape up as close as you can and slightly this kind of tape will heat and become sticky with the heat of your hand. So you slightly pull and twist on this and then seal it down. If your hands are too cold, put them next to the radiator or wash them in warm water, just warm them up because if they are cold, they will not stick it. And then you've got the asparagus there. Right, eucalyptus, lots of people will show you to turn the leaf bend it slightly and wire through, but you can have a lot of breakage on this. So what I tend to do, it's quick and easy trick. Again, make your pin, 
so it's quite tight. Now on all leaves, even ivy leaves, you need to actually use the vein. So this needs to go between the veins so the vein catches in the hook part at the top. Now people do it differently. You can do it a third of the way down, which I like, or you can do two thirds for extra bend and support, but I think a third of the way down is more than enough for a rustic feel buttonhole. Bring it till you feel it catch. Don't pull too hard. If you go through, just start again, it's fine. Now these are a little softer because we've taken the woodiness out. So I would support it at the bottom. Again, taking your longest leg, bring it around straight a couple of times and then including the stem that you have left, bring it down. There you go. And it's nice and neat. There's not lots of loopy wire at the back and it's nice and tight. And you don't get to see an awful lot of it. Again, like you did with all the others, take it quite close to the top so you're hiding, pull slightly, and then wind it around and follow it down. See, it's nice and simple. If it snaps like that, you just go back onto it, put your thumb onto it and twist it around, pull off, and you'll see it's completely sealed. I'd prepare all your leaves the same, get as many as you like because you get to choose as you go along and then set them up in order so have your wheat together, have your leaves together so that when you're putting it together it's easy and you can see all your textures at once. Right, now we've got all our flowers and our foliage wired up, we're ready to put them together. I've got a selection here, we don't need to use all of them. If you think of the size of a buttonhole, it still needs to sit on the shoulder but I tend to do selections because you might swap and change and some lie better. So I'm going to start with the asparagus fern because I find it's a lovely background. You surround flowers with foliage for protection but it also lifts, as you can see on the colour here, it'll lift the flowers up from the colour of the jacket. So you start and all you need to do is create layer and texture. So as I showed you before, this bends back so you want it to lie. I tend to start with a little bit of wheat at the back. And I like twos together so you've got this kind of outline. Then I always think, start with your texture, so a little bit of berry. And we just literally start at a starting point there. So now take your tape, hold them together, and again wrap around because we want to hold these in place. Okay. Now once you've secured them, the tape, okay, so they're secured but you've still got it loose and you're still pulling as you twist, you need to cut away some of the wires. So I tend to do them at different levels, so they're diagonally up, and then you use the strongest wire, which I think is this one. Okay, so you're keeping it nice and tight and then. So you've covered this part, then I like to take bigger leaves, a little bit of si silvery kind of shade to lift it, either side. This is kind of, our rustic ones are quite large and um, you can make it smaller if you wish by using less, but we tend to like them quite bold. Now, I tend to have a look at your flowers and also some thistle texture. I've got quite a little thistle here so I think he'll look quite pretty lying just at the top there, so you've got lots and lots of texture going on. You've got this kind of fineness of the asparagus fern, the silver and boldness of the eucalyptus. You've got the kind of dryness in the wheat, some berries and some spiky thistle. Then you've got this lovely rich red that will come in right there off the pink. And as you go, twist it and tape it and you're always slightly pulling it so it sticks in place. Again, I've got another selection here and I would just drop this one on this side so we're kind of doing offsets. Bring it down. You've got, you need to bear in mind the size, keep a check on the size because although we like it large and bold ladies, men don't. They tend to say the smaller the better. And then again, we'll complement this side with a little bit more red berry. Again, it's up to you, whatever you like. 
whatever you fancy, this is the good bit about doing your own. And then I will probably just slot in the little red one lower down. And we're ready to almost cut out again. So again, this time, because it's longer, keep two solid ones I normally take from the back. And then you want to cut these. And I do it diagonally because it falls better when you take. There you go. How you doing? Right, I think we've got the size that we want now. Any bigger than that, I think it'll be a bit top heavy. So just to finish it off, again, you can take a little bit of asparagus fern. If it's a little bit too long, you can cut it down. I tend to just like it a little bit. And push the bottom ones up the way. So we've got lots of twos, but normally in any flower arrangement it's normally odd numbers, but I've got three sets of twos going on with the fourth, but I'm going to bring the third one down here now. The wispiness will always make it really rustic. If you can put dried in there or grasses, that always helps. Dainty flowers. You need to choose the correct flowers for buttonholes. The ones that need to last a long time. So things that are woody. Roses are always really fantastically good. Berries are really good. Thistles are really good. Uh, carnations, pinks that we're using here, very, very good. Uh, you don't want to use soft flowers. You don't want to put things like stock in it. They will wilt and go over quite quickly, but your florists can help you and advise you if you need it. Or you can always pick up the phone and call us. I'm always happy. Now, I tend to do smaller ones at the front, and I like another two. So I tend to pop it because we're just kind of finishing it off nicely. I need something. But I need something little more down here so I'm going to actually use a big one there and again this is a luxury one this is quite a large buttonhole if you wanted to make it smaller just take away these bits and just put two cut down on the asparagus spoon it won't make it so wispy right got quite a nice thickness there to support now so I'm just going to bring my tape down around if I show you just to seal in these wires because you don't want them catching. Now I always cut off flat before the end. And what you need to do, and there's a bit of a technique, so it may take a few practices, but just bring it up past, you can see there. Bend it over slightly so you're creating a seal. And then you come in back on yourself slightly and you just need to keep it as tight as you can and creating a little bit of a parcel. And then come back down, finish it off, and pull, rub it between your fingers, and we've got the actual practical bit sorted there. You can, again, the wires allow you to bend these leaves in any shape or form. Now, a tip that we do at the Great British Florist is we like twine to finish these off. So we take just a little bit. Now you can use string or you can use ribbon at this point. It's completely up to you. Just a little bit because you're not going to go all the way down because we don't want to make it too thick. You hold it to the back. Bring the string forward. Twine is in this case. Now I tend to like to leave a little gap through so that when you come back up, you've got almost something to fall back into. Bring it down. Just so far, because you need to scan, you have to remember, and we're coming back up in the grooves that we've left. Doesn't make it so thick and clumpy then. So make sure you've covered. Turn it to the back, and the knot needs to go at the back because you don't want it shown. You can rest this because it's quite hard, it's resting on the thistle. Just loop it through. Tie it tight, it'll hold, and the wires will hold it. Just Gently place back. Double knot it. And then take your scissors. If you're struggling with your scissors because they're not sharp enough, that's what we use the second tiers for on the wires, but you should be able to cut these. And then 
take your sprayer on a very, very fine mesh. Just moistens it a bit because leaves will drink it through water through the, the leaves and the berries, it shines up the berries. And then take a pen, button holes are always one pen. Corsages are always two. And just pop it through and you're ready for tomorrow. And that will set beautifully. Mostly these are tilted outwards on a man's buttonhole and lads are always left, ladies are always right and buttonholes are always worn pointing up ways. And that's your buttonhole. Well done.